One of the toughest things when recording a video and editing a video is color correction. Getting the colors right and all that stuff involved with it. If you don't have access to raw files, it's even harder because you can't manipulate the picture as well. But in this video, we're not gonna be talking about the actual color correcting. We're gonna be talking about one key factor that makes the color correction process that much easier. But before we get started, if you have any questions, comments, or anything whatsoever, please leave it down in the comment section down below. I'll be happy to have a conversation with you guys about Adobe, about OBS, about tech gear, all that stuff down in the comments. And if you want to ask me things more directly or just have a conversation with me, I stream every Saturday afternoon, night-ish, right around four or five-ish, depending on how I feel that day. And uh, I do about an hour on here for some dot to dot art I've been doing lately. And I switch over to Twitch for the rest of the stream, twitch.tv slash ghetto happy. I'd be really appreciative if you gave me a follow over there as well. And if you found this video helpful, entertaining or anything whatsoever, please leave a like and consider subscribing. So as you can imagine from the title of this video, we're gonna be talking about adjustment layers. And it's a very simple concept. It's gonna be a quick video just to get you uh, the idea of what it is and what you can do with it. Now with Adobe Premiere, you have access to adjustment layers. Now adjustment layers are simply a layer that you put on top of your video or anything that you have that you want to color correct and it lays over like a filter to make it look the way you want it the reason why you would use a adjustment layer is one reason is you don't have to worry about taking every individual clip and throwing a lot your LUT on it the other reason is you can take that adjustment layer and Put it towards all the other files seamlessly and it's a lot easier than just taking each individual clip or taking each uh file exporting it with a color correction and you you're really cor color correcting all the stuff that you're going to be cutting anyway so try to save yourself time with this it's it's a time saver mostly all right so we have my adobe session open we are editing the tutorial for the just chatting scene in OBS video that I highly recommend checking out if you're a Twitch streamer or someone who creates stuff using OBS. It's a simple concept and it's a simple video, but I feel like it's a good foundational piece for anyone starting out using OBS. Go to file, new, adjustment layer. At this point, you need to match your specifications within the project. Right now it's 1920 by 1080, 24 frames per second. I know it says 23, but it's 24 uh, in layman's terms. And uh, pixel uh, square pixels 1.0, I haven't changed that. Or if there's anything specific that you want, I would stick to one. I think that's the ratio one to one. So you don't have to worry about it uh, being cropped or adjusted in any, any different way. So keep it like that. If you have any other specifications that you want, they're there. But if you're just doing this simply and just starting out, keep it like this, you'll be fine. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna click okay. Now for me, a lot of times I have my, actually most of the time, I have my main video and my B-roll. So instead of just having your adjustment layer named adjustment layer, it could get very confusing. So we're gonna name this main video. And if you have more things that you're going to be adjusting, just name it accordingly. So if I had a B-roll one, I name it B-roll, so on and so forth, if there's other things. So now that you have your adjustment layer named and ready to go, all you're gonna do is, what I do is I put an extra video track right above my layer that I want to adjust. And I put it over all those sections. So anything below this adjustment layer will be affected by the things you change in your adjustment layer. So these three files underneath that will be color corrected if you do 
color correct it. All right, so now we're going to color correct it. I'm gonna speed it up. Here's a little montage of me color correcting and uh, doing as best as I can. I know it's not uh, my forte, but give me a little slack. All right, so we have the color correction done. Uh, this video was the first one that I did in this setup, this type of uh, scene. So I didn't have the, the lighting just right, but as you can see here, I got it a little bit better. So uh, just moving the lights, it, it's amazing how much if you just move your lights a little bit, you could get stuff like this, or you could get something with the shadows were a little bit harsh and the darker areas were a little bit harsh. So I had to adjust it a little bit. So a little before and after, this is before, this is after. Now, before I get into the next part, make sure this is this is a huge Adobe, uh, well, I don't know if it's Adobe specific, but in Adobe, make sure while you're color correcting, you have the layer, the adjustment layer selected while you're doing it. See all this stuff? It's applied, all these, uh, modifications are made for this adjustment layer and anything below it, it applies to. It's not on those files, but these adjustments are on the adjustment layer. And like I said before, anything below it is affected by the adjustment layer. So if you take an example, if I was to select this file right here, you see that all the modifications are now at zero. If I go back to the other one, to the adjustment layer, all the modifications are back. Be careful. Make sure that the one that you're adjusting is selected within your doing color. And this applies for just about anything you do in Adobe. Make sure the file that you're working on is selected. All right, so now that we got the adjustment layer color corrected and ready to go, something to keep in mind. Another thing, if I was to take, so we had modified this, you see with the purple logo there with the FX in purple. Something that you need to keep in mind, it, it might be obvious, but I'm just gonna point it out right now. This adjustment layer right here is adjusted. It's color corrected, it's been modified. The one right here in there is still vanilla and there's no modifications. I will show you. If I was to take this, oh, this is my main video adjustment layer. It should be the same. If I take it, put it out like this. Oh, it's gonna be color correct. It's gonna be great. Let's go back to the color. This is modified. Remember what I said, select the ones that you're gonna be working on. It's back to zero. That's because this one is in the timeline and this specific adjustment layer is modified, not the one that you just put in. You do the whole alt. If you're on a PC, I think it's command. Is it command? I don't know the, mo the, I'll leave it in the corner, uh, the Mac equivalent. So on PC, it's Alt, and you drag it. A little pro tip here. Make sure when you're doing this copying a file and you're using the Alt, the little uh, quick key, release the click first. <laughs> Don't release the alt first, otherwise you're just gonna drag the one that you already did and you gotta do it over again. I've done that tons of times when I'm working too fast and I'm not paying attention. That little tip there. And then, oh no, we have a crop or a uh, downsize of the field that we color corrected. And if you see, like if I was to take this away, look how the whole thing is color corrected. I turn it off, even the OBS and the face cam are color corrected. So I turn it back on, you can see that hint of uh, color correction. It's more gray here and then it's more orange here, or well, not orange, but like a, a lighter tone. That's because the, the adjustment layer is based on the 1920 by 1080 we had before. Our field that we want to focus on is in the bottom corner. It's no longer the full frame. 
That's another thing that I had to get understood. As I said before, it covers everything underneath it. So a way to get around this, we're gonna do the same thing again. We're gonna copy this. I could go across and cut it. Like another way you could do that is, you could do it that way, or you could do like this, take the cut thing, do that, and then you can modify that way. Up to you, depending on what you wanna do. It works the same way, it's just sometimes it's easier one way or the other, depending on who you are. Now, we have the adjustment layer on the full frame, the 1920 by 1080. What we need to do now is we need to downsize this to what it is, what this is, not the full thing. Now, normally, if we just had to simply copy the parameters to what it is now, you would just simply go into it like this. See this? We would copy those parameters and apply them to the adjustment layer. That will allow it to just fit around the section that we want. Problem with that is, if you noticed, there are some keyframes here. If I mute this, so we don't have any noise. Look at this. My fancy work with keyframes. It brings it down to the point of being in the corner. It doesn't just hard cut. If it was a hard cut, I would just simply just copy and paste it. But <laughs> we need to copy all of it. Keyframes and everything. The whole path of the frame. Don't get too worried. It's very simple. It's literally just redoing your keyframes. So what we're going to do is just like I said, we're going to copy the keyframes and make sure that that adjustment layer sticks to our subject and what we are putting it towards. So we're going to do a little montage of me doing that. I'll be right back. All right, so quick and painless. That was a lot easier than I remember it being. You, it used to be very, very uh, daunting, thinking, oh crap, I gotta do this. But no, it, it's becoming more and more uh, easy. It, like practice, practice makes perfect. So as you can see now, the adjustment layer follows the same path as your scene or your frame that, you're want, that you want to pick. All right, so one more montage. Me applying this to everything else. All right, so as you saw right at the end there, I had to add another keyframe change to the adjustment layer because I brought the scene back to full screen. Just did what I did before in reverse. Pretty simple, easy to do. Alrighty, that is how you make adjustment layers, how you work with them. Very simple concept, but it can be a life changer when you're editing videos, especially in Premiere Pro. So I hope that this is something that you guys can use. It's very common and very useful to a lot of people, but unfortunately, it's one of those things that's kind of hidden, so you don't necessarily run into it or stumble over it. It's something that you have to figure out and uh, look out look out for it on the internet or maybe from word of mouth or whatever, but it's uh, definitely something that's very useful in editing. So thank you all for watching. Hope you all enjoyed it. If you liked that video, please hit the like button down below and consider subscribing for more videos like this, tips and tricks. I really enjoy making these. I've made a bunch so far and I look forward to making more. Uh, they're quicker videos and it's easier to get content out to you guys because I can do a little faster and I can have you guys uh, learn some more and learn from what I've learned and the mistakes that I've made and uh, 
the success that I've had from learning from those mistakes. Not sponsored, but I highly recommend Liquid Death. It's a mountain water that comes in a can, so you don't have to deal with nasty plastic. Not sponsored, maybe one day. They're really cool. They're a little aggressive with their uh, uh, advertising and the way they present themselves, but I really don't care. It doesn't bug me. I actually really love it. So uh, go look them up and uh, pick up some water. It's fairly priced and uh, you don't have to worry about plastics being used because uh, plastics are bad for the environment and uh, we don't recycle them and we say that we recycle them, but we really don't. So be good to the environment, not just with using metal or using biodegradable stuff. Uh, just be good to it. That all being said, as always, be safe, be kind. If you go out, please wear a mask. We're on the cusp of getting through this pandemic. We're, we're hopefully going to have a vaccine out in the early times of 2021. And um, as far as I can hear, it looks like by the end of the next year, we should have the world getting into some type of normalcy. So hoping on that, but keep wearing a mask. If you go out, I know it's a pain in the butt and uh, it's not easy, but just go ahead and do that, please. And I will see you in the next video. This guy chundering? No, he's, he's sweeping without a broom. Hmm. Okay then.